Welcome in, everyone, to Lively Lewis Stories. That's right. We're back with even more awesome adventures with Levi and Ivy. Set your story time meter to fun and get ready to join the Lively Lewis crew. All you need is your imagination and... Off we go! I can't wait to see where our story takes us today. Have you ever wanted to get more Lively Lewis in your life? Well, we've got you covered. Grab an adult and zoom over to LivelyLewisShop.com. Or just click on the link in our show notes. Enough about that. Let's get to today's super Lively Lewis story. Levi, are we still going on a hike? Called Levi's dad from the garage as he was searching for his hiking poles. If you don't want to go, just let me know. At this point, Levi was playing basketball outside with his mom and sister, and he looked upset when he heard his dad calling his name. He had promised that he would go hiking, but now that it was time to go, he really didn't want to. Um, sure, yeah, I'll be there in a minute, said Levi reluctantly as he dribbled around the driveway. Levi, you did promise, said his mom, and you know how much your dad loves hanging out with you. Come on, it'll be fun. Maybe you'll see some cool animals or find a waterfall. That would be fun, right? Sure, mom, said Levi, sounding less than excited. He knew his mom was just trying to be positive, but it didn't change the fact that he didn't feel like going hiking. But after his dad walked out of the garage in his new hiking boots with his hiking poles and his backpack filled with trail snacks, Levi couldn't say no. His dad looked so excited. He really didn't want to disappoint him. Hey, dad, you look awesome, said Levi. I'm all ready to go. Levi's dad could tell his son was less than enthusiastic about their outing and tried his best to let him know how much fun it was going to be. Levi, we're going to hike a completely new trail today, one we've never been to before. It'll be so exciting, like we're explorers traveling in a new part of the world, discovering unique and amazing things. I hope you don't discover a big patch of poison ivy like last time you went hiking, giggled Ivy as she grabbed the basketball from Levi. Thanks for reminding me, Ivy, Levi snapped back. Oh, that won't happen again, said Levi's dad reassuringly. I know just what to keep an eye out for now. Leaves of three, let it be. Or was it leaves of four, hikings of boar? Whispered Levi under his breath. Either way, I have my hiking book and we can look it up if we think we see some poison ivy. Sound good, Levi? Asked his dad with a big smile on his face. Sounds great, said Levi, trying to sound excited, but not doing a very good job at it. His dad was starting to see more and more that Levi didn't want to go hiking, and it was starting to make him feel a little bad. We can just keep this hike short. Okay, buddy, said Levi's dad as he walked toward the car. Now Levi felt bad. He didn't want his dad to be upset. He loved hanging out with him. It was hiking that he wasn't such a big fan of, but since his dad loved it, Levi thought he should try a little harder to see what it was about. And that day, it was a good idea that he did because that hiking trip would turn out to be pretty rad. Levi and his dad drove to the conservation area where the hiking trail was. As they did, his dad started telling him a story about why he liked hiking so much, hoping that by doing this, it would help Levi understand why he wanted to share this activity with him. My dad and I used to go hiking all the time, began Levi's dad. It was kind of our thing. We'd take off into the woods with some snacks and water and see what we could find. We'd see all kinds of animals, go fishing in streams. We even found a waterfall one day. I loved hiking so much that I would go with my friends all the time. We would bring some toys into the woods behind my house and play all day, building forts and pretending to be great explorers. Of course, we could see the house from the trails we were hiking on, but if we used our imagination, we were hiking some unknown trail on the other side of the world. It was great. It was at that moment that Levi realized that hiking was more than just wandering through the woods with his dad. It was a part of his childhood that he wanted to make a part of Levi's childhood too. Levi decided to change his attitude toward hiking, at least for that day. He was going to be open-minded and see what the day had in store for him and his dad. Once they arrived at the start of the trail, Levi had a big smile on his face. He apologized for being in a bad mood at home and told his dad he was excited to have a great day with him. That's so awesome to hear, buddy, said Levi's dad. Now let's go start our awesome adventure. The hike started out as any normal hike would. There were some bugs, some fallen trees to jump over, and some muddy puddles to splash in. There were lots of birds chirping and squawking overhead and mysterious rustling in the bushes, which Levi's dad always suggested was Bigfoot. No, Dad, I don't see Bigfoot over there by the trail marker sign, laughed Levi for the third or fourth time that hiking trip. Oh, could, because I definitely thought I saw a big furry something run that way, 
said Levi's dad with a goofy smile. Maybe we just missed him. They continued on following the trail as it wound through the forest. As they did, the sun got stronger and it was time to stop for a snack and some water. Levi then suggested that he and his dad wander off the trail and see if they could find a place to cool off. Maybe we can even find a brook or a stream to dip our feet in, said Levi. I kind of feel like I hear the sound of rushing water coming from over there. I love your adventurous spirit, replied Levi's dad, but safety first. As long as we can see in the main trail, we can do a little exploring. Levi was fine with that and ventured off the trail with his dad right behind him. He pushed aside vines and walked through bushes before stopping in his tracks. Dad! Levi called out. You've got to see this! What did you find? Called out Levi's dad, quickly walking toward where he had been standing. Is it a brook? Or a cool animal? Or Bigfoot? Is it Bigfoot? No, Dad, it's not Bigfoot, answered Levi. But it is definitely just as cool. As Levi's dad got closer, he looked over Levi's shoulder and saw what he was looking at. It certainly was nothing that either of them expected to see in the forest. It wasn't a brook or an animal or even Bigfoot. Instead, as they stood side by side, just a short way from the main trail, they found themselves staring at a time machine. They couldn't believe what they were looking at. They quickly discovered that rushing water sound that Levi heard was coming from the strange looking metal machine. It was whirling and beeping and looked like something out of one of Levi's science fiction TV shows. The ones where time travel is real and people could jump back or forward to any time they wanted to. After watching so many of those shows, it didn't take Levi long before he asked his dad if he could go inside. I don't think so, Levi, began his dad. I'm pretty sure your mom would be mad at me if I let you go inside a time machine we found in the forest and you got whisked away to the time of the dinosaurs or something. After all, she was mad at me when I was 10 minutes late picking you up from soccer practice last week. Well, maybe we could go together, Dad, asked Levi. Think of how cool it would be, the ultimate exploration adventure. Levi's dad had to admit he was really interested, but remembered what his dad would tell him every time they went hiking. Safety first. Okay, buddy, I'll tell you what. I'll go in and see what it's all about, said Levi's dad. It wouldn't be safe if we both went in. We need to keep someone in this time dimension just in case. In case of what, Dad? Asked Levi, looking really excited. In case I chase a dinosaur out of this thing, you'll need to be here to wrangle it and get it back to the Cretaceous period, laughed Levi's dad. Levi laughed as well and wished his dad good luck as he walked toward the time machine. The giant metal machine was covered in bells, whistles, switches, dials, clocks, and buttons. Where should I go? Asked Levi's dad as he looked around inside. Oh, wait, I know. It didn't take long before his dad turned toward one of the keypads marked destination year and typed in 1997. He'd been talking about his childhood so much that day that he thought, why not travel back to it for a minute? But of course, before he pressed the start button, he made sure to figure out how he was going to get back. He saw another keypad labeled destination time frame. He typed in five minutes and turned to face Levi. I'll be back in five minutes, buddy, said Levi's dad. But before he left, he tied a length of rope that he had in his hiking backpack around his waist. He then gave the other end to Levi to hold on to. He figured if he needed any help, he could just have Levi pull on the rope and bring him back right into the forest. Have fun, dad. I can't wait to hear all about your time traveling adventure when you get back, said Levi. Levi's dad smiled, pressed the start button, and in a matter of seconds was whisked away into a cloud of smoke as the time machine buzzed, beeped, and spun around. Five minutes passed, but it felt like forever. Levi had set a timer on his dad's phone that he left with him before he started his adventure. Levi kept checking it to see when his dad would be back. As he waited, he counted down. Count with me, friends, from five, four, three, two, one. Great job. Just then, the time machine buzzed, beeped, and spun around again. Levi went to pull on the rope he was holding to help his dad out of the time machine, but as he did, he noticed there was no resistance. The rope wasn't tied to anything anymore. It slipped out of the time machine without Levi's dad on the other end. Oh no, Levi thought to himself. As the time machine settled to a stop, Levi was hoping his dad would walk out and tell him all about what he saw. However, what Levi saw next was not exactly what he was expecting. 
Instead of his dad, out of the time machine stumbled a boy about his age. Hey, buddy, said the little boy. My name's Eric. I was just on a hike with my dad and my friend Zach, but we got separated. Have you seen them? Levi didn't know exactly what to say at first, but something about the little boy seemed very, very familiar. He couldn't help but think that he looked like someone he knew. His voice also sounded like the one Levi had heard before. And as he stood there, he started to put the pieces of the puzzle together. The little boy looked familiar. He sounded familiar. Levi's dad's name was Eric, and he always called him Buddy. Oh my goodness, it's my dad, as a little kid. Levi shouted in his head, not wanting to freak out the little boy. Levi kept that information to himself and simply replied, Hi, my name's Levi. That's a totally awesome name, replied Eric. Have you seen my dad? We love hiking together. Um, maybe not your dad, but I think my dad is pretty close by, said Levi. Okay, I guess I'll just wait here for my dad to come back then, said Eric. Up until that point, Eric hadn't noticed the time machine and couldn't believe his eyes when he turned around and finally saw it. A time machine? My dad would think this is so cool, exclaimed Eric. I can't wait to show it to him. I totally want to go in there and check it out. But my dad always says, safety first. While Eric was looking at the time machine, Levi was trying to figure out how to handle the situation. Then all of a sudden, they both heard rustling in the bushes. It was then that Eric turned toward the noise quickly with a smile and said, do you think that's Bigfoot? He started to laugh and then explained to Levi that his dad always said that when they heard a noise while hiking. Levi couldn't help but smile too. Now knowing why his dad would say it to him all the time on their hikes. While we're waiting here, do you have any toys to play with? Asked Eric. I forgot my backpack. I usually have some pogs in there or my trolls dolls or my Nintendo Game Boy. That's my favorite toy. I'm sorry, but I don't have any toys with me. I don't know what any of those things are, answered Levi. Oh, man, I'm so mad. <laughs> Not, laughed Eric. It's okay, buddy. I'm sure our dads will be back in no time. It was then that Levi knew he needed to get his dad back for sure. That's when he suggested that Eric go into the time machine. He did just what his dad did a few minutes earlier, tied the rope he was holding around Eric's waist. He told Eric it was there so he would be able to pull him back if he needed to. Eric, it was great meeting you. It really was, but you need to go back to your dad and I need my dad back here with me, started Levi. You have to trust me when I say, I think the only way to do that is if you go on a little time traveling adventure. I love adventures, so I'll do it, said Eric with a big smile. This rope seems pretty safe, so I think my dad would approve. It was really great meeting you, Levi. I know this is gonna sound weird, but I feel like I already knew you, like we met before. Maybe, answered Levi with a smile. I have a feeling too, and it's that we'll see each other again. Sounds totally cool to me, buddy, answered Eric as he typed in 1997 again into the keypad marked destination year. Levi didn't tell him about the destination time frame keypad so they could leave it blank, allowing Eric to jump back into the correct time travel timeline and not return back to Levi. Eric waved goodbye to Levi as he pressed the start button. Bye, Dad. See you soon, whispered Levi to himself, hoping his plan to get his dad back would work. The time machine buzzed, beeped, and spun around. When it stopped, Levi held his breath, waiting to see who would step out and hoping it would be his dad on the other end of the rope. Not his dad as a kid. Then he heard, Levi, Levi, are you there? Dad, called out Levi as he ran toward the time machine. A light smoke cleared as Levi's dad stepped out, looking like a dad, not like a little kid anymore. As he did, the time machine seemed to fade away into the light smoke until it was gone completely. It was as if it had been waiting there just for Levi and his dad. But Levi was so happy to see his dad, he didn't give any more thought to the time machine. It's so great to see you again, Eric, exclaimed Levi. Eric, replied his dad. It was clear to Levi at that point that his dad didn't know that the kid version of him had time travel to the future while he was exploring 1997. Oh, sorry, I mean dad, answered Levi. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just really happy to see you. How was time traveling? Levi's dad then went on to tell him all about what he saw back in 1997. He talked about the silly words they used, the toys they played with, and seeing some of his friends when he jumped back in time. I saw my friend Zach, said Levi's dad. It was so funny to see him as a little kid. He was playing with my favorite toy ever. Your Nintendo Game Boy? 
said Levi quickly. Yes, said Levi's dad, sounding confused. How did you know that? You told me one time that it was your favorite toy, said Levi quickly trying to cover up how he would have known that. Well, after all, I think we should be getting home, said Levi's dad. I had a great time with you today, buddy. I hope you had fun too. Probably the most fun I've had in a long time, dad, said Levi. Thank you for taking me hiking. Do you think this could be our thing now? Like how you and your dad used to hike together all the time. Absolutely, Levi. Nothing would make me happier, said Levi's dad, giving his son a big hug. As they headed back to the main trail, they once again heard a rustling in the bushes. And before his dad could say a word, Levi shouted out, Do you think that's Bigfoot, Dad? He said it with a huge smile on his face, but it couldn't have been bigger than the smile Levi's dad had. At that moment, Levi's dad felt like a kid again, remembering all the great times he had hiking with his dad and looking forward to all the amazing memories he would make with his own son. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the story and learned a little something too. And since we know everyone has their own story, we'd love to hear yours. If you have an idea for a Lively Lewis story, leave a comment on our Apple Podcast review page with five stars, your idea, and your little one's name. Then maybe our next adventure will be with you. Until our next story time hangout. Thanks for listening. We can't wait to share another fun Lively Lewis story with you.